I'd like to call the regular meeting of the City of Post Falls Planning and Zoning Commission to order October 8th, 2019. Will you please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to welcome everyone here this evening. Again, make sure and silence your cell phone. And if you wish to uh, speak tonight, make sure that you sign up and turn it in up front. We'll go ahead and start with attendance. Hamby? Yes. Davis? Here. Kimball? Present. Carrie? Here. Stephenson? Here. All right. Mr. Manley, any amendments to this evening's agenda? There's none. Any ceremonies, announcements, appointments, or presentations that we need to be aware of? And as well. Okay. Commissioners, any declaration of conflict this evening? No. Um, none? No. All right. Then that'll take us to the consent calendar, Mr. Manley. Yeah, item A is the special meeting minutes from September 10th, 2019. And item B is the workshop minutes from September 11th, 2019. I move to approve the consent calendar as presented. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Call for a vote. Stephenson? Yes. Ham Hampy? Yes. Carrie? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Davis? Yes. Try to throw us off, weren't you? <laughs> <clears throat> Citizen issues. This section of the agenda is reserved for citizens <clears throat> wishing to address the commission on an issue that is not on the agenda for this evening. Comments on issues that are planned for future meetings and agenda would be asked to be held for that meeting. That being said, anyone have citizen issues this evening? Seeing none, we will continue to move on. There is no old or unfinished business. That's correct. So that will take us to the meet of this evening, and that is our public hearing. So we'll go ahead and open the first public hearing, Idaho Veneer Zone Change. Mr. Manley to present and read the file number. <laughs> Good evening, Commissioners. John Manley, Planning Manager here at the City Post Falls. To present the Idaho Veneer Zone Change request, the case file is the RZNE 1 2019. The owner is Idaho Veneer and the applicant is as well. The applicant's rep is here also to assist the uh, presentation on their behalf. The requested action from the applicant is to propose a zone change on a heavy industrial and currently smart code four zone to a smart code five zone. It's the urban center zoning designation within smart code. So you're being asked to review what's being requested and propose a recommendation to city council by the applicant to city council <clears throat> what you see here in the hatched box is the proposed zone change area uh, you have idaho street running north south kind of bisecting this uh, proposal and predominantly kind of approximately half uh, the west half is where the sc4 is currently with the east half being what's industrial um, Fourth Avenue runs along the northern boundary, uh, east-west at the approximate dislocation. Here's where you see the makeup of that breakup of what is currently SE4 and heavy industrial and the acreage accordingly. Currently the land use is a mix of mostly industrial, it's an operating veneer plant with the water and sewer to be provided by the City of Post Falls. The proposal is near an existing bus route in close proximity. So when you're looking at urban center activity with some commercial and residential, if you look at the, a lot of our comp plan policies look at encouraging multifamily towards your urban center and your higher dense, higher intense commercial uses closer to your urban core. And this would qualify for that. And going into the zone change criteria, I'm gonna kinda of go over the first three here, then go over a, a few other maps that kinda of correspond with this 
One is you'd be looking at is the proposal consistent with the future land use map within the comprehensive plan? The other is to look at the goals and policies found in your comp plan and is the proposal consistent to that? And the other one is looking at street classifications and the compatibility of the proposal with, the, with that street classification nearby. So looking at the future land use map, you're seeing residential being the yellow and commercial being the red area. The smart code five zone allows for both and a mixing of both. So this would be considered uh, consistent or not inconsistent with the future land use map. <clears throat> Here's the surrounding zoning to that area. And Idaho Street runs north-south. That's a minor arterial. So the proposed development, the intensity of that would be compatible with that, as well as 4th Avenue going east-west being a uh, collector street would be compatible with that as well. Kind of already went over the compatibility with the bus route being nearby and the, the potential increased housing in this area and how that corresponds with the comprehensive plan. Other zone change criteria is looking at steering that commercial and high density residential zoning along higher road classifications. So kind of already spoke to that a little bit. So the proposal would be consistent with this criteria. The other one, limited or neighborhood commercial, it's more or less not applicable, this criteria. Uh, this one is more kind of detailed out for neighborhood commercial out towards the periphery of the community, not necessarily on an urban uh, corridor or node or a central urban activity area. Also, this not being proposed being lower density wouldn't makes it not applicable. Industrial zoning is the next criteria. Once again, they're not proposing industrial, therefore wouldn't be really applicable. Here's the agencies that were routed of them, the uh, Post Falls Police Department. They did respond as being neutral. So I'd stand for any questions you have for me at this point regarding the proposal. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Manley? The basics from, just from a staff report standpoint. Uh, John, can you give us a overview of the difference between SC4 and SC5 from a uh, use as well as a density um, analysis of what, what's yeah. the difference between the two? Yeah, so the big difference between the SC4 and the SC5 from a density standpoint is you have, well, smart code in general, it has a, it's not a max density, it's a minimum. So. And some aspects are very similar from because you could say what you could do in the SC5 from a minimum you could do in the SC4, but they do, they do state that benchmark at 8 for the SC4 and 18 for the SC5. Okay. So the SC5 does raise that the bar for a, uh, pr providing a minimum of housing. The, also the height. So you can do only three stories in the SC4. You can do go up to four stories in the SC5. So there's a little bit of difference in the development intensity too between those. You do have some SC5 just to the west of this. I mean, planning wise, if you were to have SC4, some could argue this would be the area you would have SC4 with the SC5 being more near that, consistent with that that zone change criteria, having it closer to your urban activities or nodes, the fourth criteria of the zone change okay. would be probably where the SC5 would be consistent. Is there a requirement for commercial on the ground floor in SC5? There is only in, at this point in time that requirement on if you have frontage on Spokane Street that you would have uh, provide commercial on that ground floor. Is it allowed? It's allowed, yeah. You it's, can a, do, it's allowed yeah. Out other, uh, in other places, but just not required. Is that correct? Yeah, it's not required. Okay. And that's the point of the SC5 zoning district. It tries to encourage the mixing of uses. Okay. And predominantly, you would get that commercial on that ground floor rather than other uses. Or should I say non-residential uses on the ground floor? Is there a maximum density in SC4? No. Okay. So it's just minimum and it's limited by height. 
Correct. Okay. Any other questions? All right, thank you, sir. Invite the applicant up. I would like to add one more thing. There is a one minor difference in lot coverage. I believe the SC4 has 70% lot coverage. SC5 has an 80% lot coverage. Okay. Good evening, Chairman Davis, fellow commissioners, Drew Dittman, Lake City Engineering. I'm actually representing uh, Rand Wickman Planning tonight. This is actually his project, and he asked me to pinch hit for him tonight. He was uh, scheduled to be in Dalton Gardens tonight, but uh, hopefully I'm well-versed on this and, and can answer any questions and fill you guys in. Representing Idaho Veneer in the zone change, as John had said, so the property is highlighted there in blue, consists of four parcels, roughly 20 acres uh, the western portion is currently zoned sc4 as john had said and then the eastern portion is heavy industrial looking to change it all to sc5 here's uh and i stole some maps from john's staff report because i had limited time to put this together so um, they were they were good pictures so as you can see there there's the zoning map the light purple again is the sc4 the gray is the heavy industrial um, the darker purple on fourth avenue is is all of your sc5 so this is your sc5 here along fourth avenue we got r3 to the east we got commercial north and south and a little bit of heavy industrial here um, the goal here the mill's closing it's going to close in the next couple of years uh, that's the plan um, it, it really doesn't belong at that location anymore it doesn't fit you got residential property growing around it they know they're going to close this is really the first step uh, in in the redevelopment of the property and how they can off start to offer the project or the property for sale and close down the mill is to get it rezoned it's it's not a viable industrial site obviously anymore so that's the purpose of the zone change um, again there's four separate parcels 20 acres uh, going for sc5 and i wanted to read real quick because commissioner kimball had asked but the the sc5 and this is right out of the staff report the SC5 zone is intended to have the general character of mixed-use walkable urban center. An urban center in the SC5 zone may be permitted to have shops mixed with townhomes, apartments, offices, and other employment-oriented development as well as civic buildings. The design is intended to have shallow to no setbacks with buildings coming right up to the sidewalk with parking in the back to showcase shop front and gallery themed development and in order to promote a more robust and friendly pedestrian oriented environment buildings are to have a minimum two stories maximum four stories so this is really your your urban core downtown core zone is what the sc5 is it's your most intense mixed use residential commercial zone uh, john touched on these i'm going to go through them briefly these are out of right out of title 18 the six criteria for a zone change. These are the determinations, the, the decision points that you guys have to make. Um, items five and six are not applicable. Lower density, residential, neighborhood, commercial, and industrial zoning are not really applicable. So that leaves us the top four. Um, number one is amendments to zone map in accordance with the future land use map. So the future land use map has part of the property residential, which is the yellow, part of the property commercial, which is the red. The SC5 zone obviously is a mixed use commercial residential zone. Seems like a good fit. Uh, is it in accordance with the comp plan? That's, that's uh, criteria number two. There's a comp plan analysis uh, in, in your file. I just touched on a few of the uh, policies here, the residential policies. Um, I'm not really gonna go through all of them, but a um, couple of important things is, uh, you know, encourage compatible infill development. This is, is, this is an infill development. It's, it's an industrial piece in the middle of town that should be uh, rezoned to, to mixed use. Um, we'll provide a range of housing types and price levels uh, to accommodate diverse ages and incomes. Obviously with that SC5, that's, that's a perfect fit. Number three, uh, and John touched a little bit on this, is you know street tr classifications. Uh, is it compatible with existing uses, future land uses? Does it is it in conformance with the the city's master plans, their strategic plans? So for street classifications, um, you have Fourth Street that borders it on the north here, and you have Lincoln that borders it right here. Those are two collector streets. Idaho Street comes down, obviously stops at 4th Street right now. The master plan shows Idaho Street going down all the way through. Idaho's a minor arterial, so you do have those higher street classifications 
uh, which are which are needed for that higher SC5 zoning. Um, existing development, future land uses, strategic master plans. So you've got the you got two maps here. So the one on the right, I, again, is your future land use map. I showed you this one earlier. You've got the residential here and the commercial here. You've got uh, multifamily apartments that just went into the east. You've got your residential downtown urban core here. You've got commercial property both north and south. So that SC5 zoning really does fit between the commercial uses, the multifamily uses, and that downtown core. Um, the other component to that is, you know, geographic or natural features. There really is no geographic or natural features. There's some environmental issues that obviously are going to need to get dealt with. It's a mill. There's going to be waste. We, we know that. Those, those issues will be dealt with at, at the appropriate time before prior to development. Um, we're, we're well aware of all of that. Um, number four, commercial high density residential zoning is typically <coughs> signed along streets with higher road classifications. Again, I just touched on that a little bit. You have 4th Street and Lincoln Street both collector streets, Idaho is a arterial, those are your higher street classifications. That's where you want your more dense, your higher intense zoning uh, properties. So there you have it. There's, there's the, the property highlighted in blue, 20 acres, looking to rezone to SC5. Questions for me? Um, just one, Drew, and I don't know if you can answer, but maybe John can, and you may want to weigh in. Um, so would doing this zone change now create a non-conforming use <laughs> that would make the mill um, in violation of the zoning code? <clears throat> I've discussed that with the owners. More, it <clears throat> would be considered a legal non-conforming use. Okay. So due to the fact that they're not trying uh, thinking to expand their current facility, yeah. they don't see that as an inhibiting element to their current facility. So. Okay. So they they're that. looking to the, the mill's going to close down. They're not going to put any more money into expanding right. that mill. So okay. um, from that standpoint, yeah, it's it's it'd be a non-conforming use, but it's it's on its way out. Okay. So any other questions for Mr. Dimon? I have a question for John. Yeah. Um, on development, would at that time would it be required for the developer to continue Fourth Street or dedicate the land to the city to to do the continuation of Fourth Street? How would that? Work? You mean Idaho? I, I, I mean Idaho. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with Idaho. development of this, we would be looking at extending Idaho to third, if possible. There would be some coordination with the rail lines and the timing. We've talked with how that potentially could be phased, if it's development, so we can still get development. So. But yeah, that would be the ultimate end game, would be to get Idaho to Third Avenue. Okay, but it would be part of it any kind of, like if it was gonna be developed, it came to have it developed, it would be part of it that that would be dedicated for development, I mean for, um, you know, continuing 4th Street. They couldn't build over that area or oh, anything. Correct. Yeah, Chairman Davis, Commissioner Kerry. So you can see in the middle, where my cursor go over here, I didn't highlight this in blue because oh. actually that right away does exist now. So this, the, there's no street there, but Ray's laughing. The, the right away does exist there. We're, we're aware of it. Yes, any development that happens on that is going to have to develop it in accordance with your transportation plan, which shows Idaho Street going through. Um, this rail spur along those lines is when the mill goes away, this rail spur would go away. Mm -hmm. um, the, the railroad tracks would not. They still service the other uh, plant down the street. Um, so there is some logistics, as John said, with the railroad crossing there. But the transportation <coughs> plan shows Idaho Street going through. So, okay. A lot of times we do, like, condition a, before you get your CO, they'll do a project, a capital project, and coordinate through engineering. And they'll do those road improvements, and those should be completed prior to getting a CO. Okay. Thank so you. This may sound like a dumb question, but <coughs> is that rail spur owned by the railroad? It's in the railroad right of way, yes. Okay. Services only Idaho veneer. Does it have a zone, John? No, it's right away. It's right, right away. Upon vacation or however that gets disbanded in the future zoning would be established probably consistent with whatever adjacent zones yeah okay are near it that's, as you know commissioner kimball that's a long process to get railroad I, right I away do vacated. Know that. yes <laughs> you're well aware of that <laughs> any other questions for mr dittman or anyone else at this time thank you sir thank you guys i'll leave that up public comment we have two neutral okay
All right, so both individuals wish to speak. They are neutral, so we'll go ahead and start off with Mr. Flowers. Mr. Flowers, I would say state your name and address, but you know that, sir. <laughs> Bob Flowers, 3914 East Maplewood <clears throat> Avenue, Post Falls. Thank you, sir. Um, I put down there neutral because I believe that if John and his family have finally decided it's time to pull the plug, more power to them. They've worked long and hard. They deserve a rest. What I don't like about it, well, two things. One, it's the last mill we really have that really shows what Idaho, what Post Falls was one day. You know, you try to explain to a kid these days what a, what a mill looks like. They ain't got the damnedest idea. There were a lot of families that were raised right here in this town by the money of that mill. I believe the property could be used for something a whole lot different than paying um, minimum wage restaurants and apartments. And by giving it an SC5 code, you've guaranteed it. Because SC5, as was pointed out earlier, has 18 unit minimum. They don't even have maximums. They got minimums. So they can stack whatever they can fit in there from anywhere from two to four stories high. We, I'm sure you folks are aware that a lot of the smart code is basically going away. It will be going away real soon. And I believe this is just the wrong code to throw towards there. They're going to still be operating for the next eh, couple years. I believe that we should hold off on rezoning this until... One, we see if we can get somebody to do something about that mill. That mill could be a hell of a tourist attraction. How about trying to show people what actually built North Idaho instead of tearing it down and putting up apartments? This, this is just, it's the last one we got. Why make it go away for a bunch of minimum paying jobs and apartments? That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Flowers. Um, also neutral wishing to speak, Joanne Angela. Angel. Again, Joanne, just have you come up. You can state your name and address. Joanne Anglin, 815 East First. Thank you. Um, I really came for Idaho Street, and you've answered my question because I knew that um, the vacation was only good for Idaho veneer. Um, I was on planning zoning years ago. And um, I'm glad to see that you're going to put it back in. I'm, I'm, that's, that was my main thing coming. I'm not against the project. I'm not against the zoning. Um, after listening to you, I do have a little bit of concerns if the parking's going to be in back. Um, they put some new lights up in Idaho veneer, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago. And that night, it was like we were on stage in our bedroom. And I called them up the next morning, and I said, oh, your new lights, they're shining straight out. Can you tip them a little? And they ran out, tipped them down, and we were good neighbors again. And I'm wondering if parking's in the back and they're going to have to have it lit, are we going to have a lot of light leakage in the neighborhoods <clears throat> to the south? And I'd like to see something like that addressed. Um, other than that, I, I, uh, light leakage, noise leakage, is there going to be some sort of wall to help mitigate the noise of cars in and out you think oh the mill's noisy well I'll tell you it's been a nice little hum for 45 years because mm. that's how long I've lived there mm. and it used to be three uh, uh, all three shifts were there 
and now it's just day, so it's relatively quiet. It doesn't have the burning stack anymore. Um, but they've been good neighbors, and I would like to see this project be a good neighbor as well with lighting and noise abatement. And I'm thrilled that Idaho's coming back. It may take a while, but I'm really glad it is. <laughs> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Dittman, anything to cover on rebuttal? Thank you again, Drew Dittman, Lake City Engineering. For the record, um, I, I concur with Mr. Flowers. It's it's sentimental, but it's I wouldn't be here tonight if it was a viable option to maintain the mill. I think you guys understand that, and you know they are going to close. They've told us, told me to tell you guys that the, the mill is closing. Um, I don't know if that's next year. I don't know if that's two years, but it's it's short term. So again, this is the first step to redevelopment of the property to make it fit with the city's master plan, sit, fit with the city's comprehensive plans. Um, again, SC5 is, is the appropriate zoning. In my opinion, you've got the dark purple there all the way down 4th Street and as the edge of the downtown core. You've got the commercial north and south and the multifamily to the east. So that seems to be the most appropriate um, use they don't have as far as, as as you know parking in the rear and noise and development they don't have any plans they're not going to develop the property they, they they're going to offer it for sale um uh, assuming we get the zone change that's that's obviously again the first step so i can't really address those issues those will be addressed at time of development and obviously whatever's developed there will have to be done in accordance with city codes and and plans and so on and so forth so okay further questions for me anything else Mr. Dittman, thank, thank you. Thank you, guys. Any other questions for staff? Anyone else before we close this out? None? No? Okay. Go ahead and close it out and open it up for comment. Anyone want to share thoughts? I will. I'll start it out. Um, I've since smart code hit post falls i i've had to work with it a couple times and i'm not a fan i've said it was a, not a very good development code but what i have said is that it is a good redevelopment code mm -hmm. and this is a case where we're taking what is essentially a an industrial, a heavy industrial site that no longer is financially viable for the owners, because the owners are the ones who are coming here saying it's not financially viable, and they want to change the zone to something that fits with the surrounding land uses, it's a mixed commercial with with residential, and we talk about how. Where do we put, you know, where do we want our density? Where should it go? We talk about trying to build a downtown core and how difficult it is to attract businesses and to build a downtown core without any people around who have to do or within walking distance. And this would be this is right next to the Centennial Trail. It's got great access for pedestrian east west. Um, north south on Idaho Street on the bridge and if there were any I, I, I'm not a fan of smart code but in this case this is probably the right move I, I honestly think it's as much of a pain in the butt smart code is that SD5 is is probably the right thing here and more density we have in a place where we have arterials and collectors and a grid network of streets the more it keeps that stuff from happening and chewing up the prairie. If we can redevelop our internal core and add density there versus outside, then I think that's, that's definitely a, a double whammy benefit. I Has agree. I, I agree with Ray. Is there anything else? Yeah. No. Same thing. I, he yeah. said it all. <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. We're in the midst of an identity crisis, and I look and I think, 
Twin Falls has gone through this. I look at Missoula has gone through this, particularly Bend, Oregon has gone through this because if you've ever spent any time in Bend at the old mill area that has now turned into some pretty amazing restaurants, shops, things of that nature. Um, I think a lot of times people think mixed use and they think four level apartment complexes and it's extremely frustrating because that's certainly not the case. I think this is a fantastic opportunity and I think that, um, you know, we, uh, we don't want to miss these kind of opportunities. Uh, it's unfortunate the mill's going away. Yes. It is our DNA, um, but the reality of it is, is what's next. And I think this is an amazing fit. So that being said, I would entertain a motion. Vicki, you want to go for it? Do I want to go for it? Uh, <clears throat> good at these. <clears throat> OK. Um, let's see. I move to approve. Um, the, plan, the zone change request RZNE-0001-20019 um, to smart code SC5. Second. Got a motion and second call for vote. Campy? Yes. Davis? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Carey? Yes. Stephenson? Yes. All right, that will bring us to our second public hearing. We have now open that. Hingston annexation. Jamie to present. <clears throat> Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. My name is Jamie Hayes. I'm Planner One with the, for the City of Post Falls. Here to present the Hingston property annexation case file ANNX-9-2019. The owner is Mr. Elmer Hingston. The applicant is Lake City Engineering. The Planning and Zoning Commission is being asked to review the annexation request of approximately 20.6 acres and to make a recommendation of the proposed single-family R1 residential zoning designation to City Council. You can see the subject subject site is in the hatched red right here. It is just south of Prairie Avenue, which is a future principal arterial. It is west of Highway 41, which is a principal arterial. It is north of Kildeer, which is a minor collector. And Cecil Avenue right here on, on the eastern boundary is, um, a pro, uh, is a future major collector. This is the current zoning around the subject property. You have a commercial corridor here in red. Everything in yellow here is single family residential. Um, you have the Tillamore PUD development right here to the southeast. And we have the technology mix zone directly to the north. Right here, that is not, it, it's in white. There's 60 acres that hasn't been recorded. That is also going to be technology mix zone as well. It's worth noting right now that the 40 acres to the west of the subject site has um, agreed to be annexed into the city with the zoning designation of R1, R2, and CCS in this northeast corner abutting the subject property. It's currently designated as agricultural by Kootenai County. There's one residential unit on the 20 acres with no significant <coughs> topology or vegetation issues. The water provider is Ross Point and the sewer provider is the City of Post Falls. There are six zone change criteria. One of them is, is if it's consistent with the future land use map, which I'll show you in the next slide. Whether it's consistent with the goals and policies found in the comprehensive plan, such as encouraging infill, encouraging appropriate densities and zoning, um, having uh, walkable area amenities next to residential uh, developments. And that zoning is assigned following considerations of such items, such as street classifications, traffic patterns, existing development. I had mentioned future land uses, community plans, all of which encourage a balance of land uses to help uh, Post Falls remain a desirable, stable, and sustainable community. Here's a future land use map. Everything in yellow is, has been designated as residential, and everything in red has been designated as um, commercial. Most of these are not applicable. Commercial is not being requested here. Limited or neighborhood commercial is not being requested here, and neither is industrial zoning. Kootenai County Fire and Rescue and Post Falls Police Department remain neutral on the proposed project. The following agencies have been routed. And I stand for any questions you might have. Questions for staff? No. No? 
All right, thank you very much. Invite the applicant up. Good evening, Chairman Davis, fellow commissioners, Drew Dittman with Lake City Engineering this time, representing myself and, and the Hingstons on the uh, annexation and zoning of their property. Highlighted there in blue, south of Prairie Avenue, west of Cecil, north of Kildeer, uh, adjacent to the Tullamore subdivision, actually adjacent to the proposed uh, ball fields that are going to go in as part of that Tullamore project. Um, Two issues to talk about tonight, annexation and zoning. Uh, so I'll go through both of them. I'm gonna go for a little bit of the ass assumptive close. I think this is just a great annexation. It's an infill project. It's surrounded by uh, property currently annexed. You got residential here, you got residential here. It seems like a, a great natural fit to me. Um, I've updated my zoning map a little bit from Jamie's and included um, the annexation that she was talking about here recently with, with the R1. So here's, here's us here. R1, R2, and a little bit of commercial there, and I believe this is coming in as technology mixed. I did not get that update on my map as well. And for some reason, I don't know why the rest of Tullamore is showing up as unzoned, but it is. So everything in, in, in mustard color there is, is the R1. We're asking for the R1 zoning designation. Uh, we know that they've got R1 and R2 next door. We'd like our entire piece to be R1. Um, same lot sizes, same building setbacks, R1 to R2. So for us, R1 is, is appropriate. Here's your annexation policies. I'm not gonna go through them one by one, unless you would like me to, Chairman Davis. We're fine, I think we're good. <laughs> um, so you guys are familiar with them. You've heard me talk about them before. What, what does it mean? Is it a good fit? Is it compatible with, with property next door, both today and tomorrow? Is it conformance with your master plan? Is it in conformance with your comprehensive plan? Is it a, is it a logical extension of the city? So here's the future land use map. It's uh, residential there, yellow is residential. <coughs> here's, here's our property. Uh, so completely surrounded by residential. So the R1 is a good fit from that standpoint. Um, you, you know, um, comprehensive plan. I, again, there's, there's, a, there's a, an analysis in the file. I, I won't go through that, but it beats several of the um, future residential policies, the, the so on and so forth. It's all in your in your file there, so I won't go into it. Uh, is it in conformance with your strategic and master plans? Um, you know, can the city provide utility services to it? Yes, it can. It's in conformance with the transportation plan. As Jamie had said, you've got uh, Cecil there running north-south, um, which is uh, a collector, I believe. Prairie Avenue is a principal arterial, so you've got good street connections there. Um, Water is served by Ross Point Water District. They have the willingness and the capacity to serve it. Uh, from a wastewater standpoint, it's part of the Tullamore uh, <coughs> sewer shed. So sewer will drain back to the Tullamore lift station. So that's been accounted for. Uh, as it relates to zoning, very similar to what I talked about before with Idaho Veneer, here's your six zoning criteria. Um, we'll cross out four and six as they're not applicable. It's high density residential and industrial. Uh, so we won't talk about those. Um, number one, amendments should be in accordance with the future land use map. I, oops, wrong way. I showed you the future land use map a minute ago. It's residential. We're asking for residential zoning. So it is in conformance with that. It is consistent with the goals and policies in the comprehensive plan, uh, as I talked about and is discussed in the narrative that we submitted. Um, street classification, traffic patterns, future developments, uh, et cetera, um, again, Prairie Avenue is a principal arterial. Cecil's a major collector. Kildeer is a minor collector. All of those were anticipated in the transportation master plan with residential densities and residential zoning. So it is in conformance there. Uh, is, it, is it compatible with you know existing and future land uses? Yes, everything around there is residential. There's a lot of growth that's been concentrated in that, in that area with a lot of recent uh, annexation requests and subdivision <coughs> requests. So it is uh, obviously parks. You got the Tulamar parks. You got the ball fields that are going in next door. So you're centrally located. You got great access to parks um, to provide connectivity and, and that. Um, yeah, I crossed those two out. So I think I'll stand for questions again. I think this is a natural fit. It's a, it's it's completely surrounded by residential. Seems like a logical extension. Questions? 
No. Mr. Dittman? Mm -hmm. No. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. Public comment. Wishing to speak in favor, Joe Dobson. Again, sir, state your name and your address, and you have five minutes. <clears throat> My name is Joe Dobson. Uh, address 3678 East Garwood Road, uh, Hayden Lake. Uh, the comments that I'm going to present are on behalf of Elmer Hingston, the owner. He is out of town. Uh, he wanted to be here, but he won't be home uh, till tomorrow. So um, uh, just his comments, and I'll read those. I'm having Joe Dobson present this letter to be a part of the record for this annexation hearing. He is representing me on this real estate uh, transaction. The property is an ideal and timely infill for adjoining properties on three sides to my existing property. I wanted to get a local, long-standing, reliable developer builder to take my property to the next level for the future. I believe it fits very well for future residential sites being next to Tullamore and the 40-acre development to the west. I've had this property for 21 years and it has served me well and I'm moving on to the next chapter. I request that you accept this request for the annexation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dobson. Appreciate it. Mr. Dittman, I don't believe we need any rebuttal. Is there any questions? Any questions? Questions for staff? <coughs> no. I think we're good. Okay. Going once. Okay, we'll go ahead and close it out. Anyone care to comment? I just think it's a natural extension. It fits right in there, all surrounded. I'm glad to see rather, you know, our one is that density rather than a two or three. Mm -hmm. so I think it's a good fit there. I'd have to agree. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Makes a lot of sense, Mr. Reddick, to the park or yeah. the future park. Absolutely. All right. Well, that being said, I would entertain a motion from someone. All right. Um, I move to recommend approval of Hingston property annexation. ANNX-0009-2019-0010 um, with a zoning designation of R1 um, with the conditions one through four um, as shown in the staff report. Second. Got a motion and a second. Call for a vote. Stephenson? Yes. Carey? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Davis? Yes. Yes. All right, so moved. That brings us to the third item under public hearings, and that is the Corbin Meadow annexation. We'll go ahead and open that up. Ethan, take it away. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, I'm Ethan Porter, Planner Moment of the City, here to present Corbin Meadows Annexation Case File ANNX-10-2019. Uh, the owners are John Corbin and Carol Han Barton, and the applicant is A Solutions LLC. Uh, tonight you are being asked to uh, review the annexation request of approximately 20 acres to make a recommendation of the proposed single-family residential R1 zoning designation to City Council. Here you can see the project hatch in red. Um, we have Greens Ferry uh, to the west here running north and south, which is a minor arterial. There's also Blue, or excuse me, Hope Avenue running east and west, uh, which is a major collector, and then Cecil running north and south, also a major collector. Um, and Bluegrass Lane here is in the county, that is north of the proposal. Uh, over here you have Greens Ferry Elementary School as well. Uh, looking at the current land use, it's large lot residential homes within Kootenai County. Um, there's no topography or vegetation issues on site, and the water provider would be Ross Point Water District, as well as the City of Post Falls providing sewer. Here are some pictures just to kind of give you an idea of what the area looks like currently. Um, along Bluegrass Lane here is from the west looking east. And 
So looking at the surrounding zoning, you can also see here that there's to the east residential subdivisions um, in the yellow. Uh, to the southeast, you can see there's some commercial um, along Cecil um, getting further south. Then there's the Green Ferry Elementary, like I mentioned, that's surrounded by R1 subdivision. And then as uh, you can see over here is the Green Meadows subdivision that will be going in as well. And then everything in white is obviously the county. So looking at the zone change criteria, uh, we're looking at consistency with the future land use match map, which I will show you on the next slide. Uh, we're looking at consistency with the goals and policies uh, found in the comprehensive plan. Um, this would provide connectivity uh, to Greensfair Elementary upon development of these uh, the 20 acres, as well as being compatible with the surrounding R1 zoning uh, subdivisions as well. Um, also, with that being said, kind of to piggyback off the Hingston, Hingston annexation that was just presented, it would be a county infill um, for this site as well. So now it's a large pocket, and this would be 20 acres that would be come into the city. Uh, looking at the following considerations, there is not anticipated to be any traffic issues with an R1 designation in this area, um, as well as the streets can maintain an R1 zoning along that bluegrass, which would eventually become Hope Avenue, uh, running east and west. Um, so here, looking at the future land use designation, it is uh, residential, which we are proposing residential for R1. So it would be consistent with the future land use map. Um, then looking kind of the lower density residential zoning being further away from the uh, urban uh, center, which it is, and as well as the commercial corridors. It is within its you know, compatible uses of R1 subdivisions <coughs> surrounding it and uh, county lands as far as re residential and agricultural. Um, it's not industrial or commercial or high, high density residential, so that zone, zone change criteria would be uh, not applicable in this situation. We, this, were, this was the agency that it was routed to for comment, and we received Post Falls Police Department in Kootenai County Fire and Rescue uh, remain neutral. Post Falls Highway District um, remains neutral, and just wanted to add that constructing Bluegrass Lane would be um, to city standards. Can I entertain any questions? So what is, so Bluegrass is a, it's, it's a private road and it's a dirt road, right? It's in the county, correct. And it's dirt, as you saw from the pictures. And so that would be developed um, as this, if the subdivision comes through and becomes developed, they would do that road as well. Okay, that would be it. part of the subdivision. Correct. Mm -hmm. the subdivision. Okay. Would it go all the way through to Greens Ferry or would that part stay? Um, that would be part of the subdivision um, time frame. As far as, as you can see from this, there'd be, I think it's like 600 feet of this property here. Um, they are putting in sewer um, from what I believe staff has commented on. So with that being said, sewer would have to be um, put in either to the existing condition of the road or improved. And so depending on, I guess, what happens at the subdivision stage would be either putting in new um, gravel or paving it, and that's kind of yet to be determined, so. Would it be fair to say that the highway district comment's probably more applicable to a subdivision application than an annexation? Correct. Okay. Any other questions? None? Thank you, sir. Invite the applicant up. <clears throat> Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for your work for the community. Uh, my name is Joe Hassel. I'm a, the engineer at uh, Ace Solutions here in Post Falls. Roger Glessner was going to be here tonight, but uh, he's taken ill for the past couple days, so I'm filling in for him. Um, I'm not going to take too much of your time. Um, this is uh, a, a shoe in. Um, generally speaking, it's, it's midway between Greenberry and Cecil. It's midway between Pole Line and Prairie with the other annexation that you had this evening and others that are sure to follow. Uh, this does make sense. Uh, we're not asking for a zone that's uh, not the same as uh, 90 plus percent of the properties that are around us. Uh, 
the right-of-way dedication of bluegrass, which will probably be renamed Hope. I don't know that, but that right-of-way dedication and the improvements will serve to uh, offer close contiguity between uh, east and west. Uh, as pointed out, that last 600-foot piece of gravel will have to come later. The project uh, will provide, as engineering or planning wants, uh, continuity to the south uh, to enable this development to work through the southerly properties when they develop. I won't take any more of your time. Do you have any questions? Any questions at all for the applicant? I got one quick one, Mr. Hassel. Is that well lot part of the annexation or not? <clears throat> it is, and okay. a, a little anomaly that's going on here. That water uh, system, it's a bona fide system, it serves several other par properties in the area and will continue to do so uh, after this property is developed. But a requirement of this development is that all these properties annexed into the city will have Ross Point water. Okay. Do you have any other questions? No. Anything else? No. Thank, Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank it. You. Public comment. We have two. Okay. All right. First individual does wish to, wish to speak and is neutral. Nate Brennan. Again, Nate, state your name and address. You have five minutes, sir. Okay, my name is Nate Brennan, and I live at 2883 Bluegrass Lane, directly across from this proposed. So I got uh, two things to speak about, kind of two different hats to wear, if you will. Um, I've lived in Post Falls about 18 or 19 years, raised five kids all the way, raising them through all the schools here. So I love Post Falls, really interested to hear about the downtown, um, the SC5 and 4, because, you know, we like, I'm a, in a builder and stuff, looking to put some money there would be great. But I, I had a house in Prairie Falls and I had a house in Fieldstone and, you know, we've been good. I'm in construction and been able to build and move. Um, it's not automatic for me because this, we moved to this specific property because it was in the county. We have horses, chickens, goats, um, pigs, 4-H, kids do all that. So as you can see, it, I know the zoning says it's an automatic infill, but for us, um, not necessarily. We have barns, shops, outbuildings, as you can see, most of our neighbors do. And so... Most people are there for that reason. Um, like I said, though, I mean, I understand progress and um, having the homes come in and the new parks and stuff has is, is been good. So I have a question, and maybe he can answer it when he comes back up. I don't know if there's different zonings for R1 or if every R1 is like five houses per lot, you know, if it would be like the Meadows or Dalton Gardens and kind of fit what we've already got there. As you can see, 80% of this is surrounded by five-acre lots in the county. Um, that was just kind of my opinion thing. The second thing is the road is, I think it's called a non-maintained public road, which is kind of the worst type of road you can have. And especially when you've got development going on. So you get big trucks in there. Um, me and some of my neighbors have put a lot of money and time into that road. And we're kind of at the point now where we're just letting it go because the worse it is, the less people drive on it, which is not really what, <clears throat> what you want for your family and stuff living on the road. But that's where we're at now. So. It would be interesting to see um, if the road went through or if it's just going to stop there at the end of the neighborhood and then you're just going to get picked up traffic on that last little bit. Um, but it's been, it's kind of half blocked off now. It's a weird thing. It's not, it doesn't work really well if you ever went up there. Um, so those would be my other concerns on the road if it's going to get paved through and then what it'll look like will be half paved with the sidewalk on one side and what will my side of the street look like. Um, I know that's a big concern. And then my last thing, I'm the president of Prairie Water Association, which is just a, a volunteer position. Um, the old guy, so the guy that was doing it before me, developed on the end of the road and took off. So I took over for him a few years ago. Um, we service about 27, all the homes on, um, I think it's called Bogey, it used to be called Wheelbarrow, to the south, Bluegrass, what we're talking about now, and then Kildare to the north. It's about 27 homes that are serviced. We're a private water district, uh, United Pump, Drilling is our water master. They do all our DEQ testing and everything like that. Well, we've got our, our pump house sits on this piece of property. Um, we've got an easement. I got the papers here. It's about a 100-foot easement that surrounds that pump house and well um, that we need to get to regularly. So he was saying it would be annexed in. I would think that it wouldn't be, that it would remain in the county. I'm not sure. 
we have a main water line. It's a looping water system, so it, it kind of goes around the perimeter. Unfortunately, it cuts right down the middle. So there's two 10-acre piece, pieces there. There's the 10 acres to the, to the east and then the 10 acres that um, the gentleman just bought. And it goes right down the middle of those 10. So if you, were, if you were to come three quarters of the way back towards Greens Ferry, there's a water line about 48 inches deep, an eight inch main that services the nine properties below. That would have to be rerouted or there's bylaws when you exit the water association, you just have to cap it off. Um, have United Crown come out. We, I had to do it with McCarthy. I've done it with Termac and um, I've done it with Copper Basin. It's a huge pain in the butt, but we've been able to get it done. But this one is, is, you know, to say the least, much more than twice as difficult. So I don't know if we're ready to, if you guys are ready to annex it in until we have a solution, then I don't know if that burden falls on me to work on that, you know, on nights and weekends to try to get that figured out or the cost, you know, to, to kind of figure out what we're gonna do there. Um, so that's, that's my biggest concern there. Okay. Um, I think that's it, thank you. Excellent, yeah. no, thank you. Applicant, oh, hold on, before you come up, we'll do, sorry, missed the other one as well. Uh, we do have uh, individuals not wishing to speak that are in opposition, Ted and Betty, is it Argraves? Argraves. Um, proposal annex uh, includes um, Prairie Water Association Water Reservoir, which um, has an easement water line for approximately 10 members, uh, travels the property. I think it was just what we were just discussing. Um, so that is in for the record. And with that being said, we'd invite the applicant up to maybe address a couple of those issues. <clears throat> I believe there were three comments, and I'll play this uh, uh, backwards on this. The, the small water district, we know that it's there. Uh, we know that constituents are throughout the area. I'm sure there's some uh, legalese that's going to have to take place on this. I don't know the details and the intricacies of that. I know that we're in the process of getting our will serve letter from Ross Point. Um, these will have to be taken care of. I, I'm sure there are easements or there will be new easements, uh, but I don't know the details of it. Uh, with regards to the road, we'll improve and develop uh, bluegrass uh, to the extent engineering at, at uh, Post Falls requires us to. Uh, if that's the half section of the road or whatever they want, we will do. With regards to the zoning that we're going for, the R1, uh, I understand the, the, the difference between uh, small residential lots being next to agriculture or horses and cows. But I will say that uh, in watching around uh, this general area, within about a mile of this area, uh, I think the, the people get along pretty well. Uh, there are some problems, uh, but they're very few. I think the compatibility will be okay. So, okay. any other questions? Just really quick, with regards to the water, would it be fair to say that annexation isn't gonna change the water system anything and that you will address the water system if a subdivision comes forward? That's correct. That's okay. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other questions for staff? Anything else that we need to address? No. Okay. We'll go ahead and close it out. Open it up. Anyone comment? Five years ago, this wasn't infill, but now it is. And it's, it's an island. Um, our annexation and comp plans policies say that we should focus on islands of county inside the city and R1 matches everything in that vicinity. So I think it makes sense. James, Nancy, yeah. Vicki. Well, I, I have some concerns with the, with the water situation and, and the road. Um, however, I, I do understand that that is a subdivision matter more right. than it is um, a, a zoning or a, an annexation. Um, so with that, I hope we get a chance to address that. And, and I think that, you know, the staff will definitely address those things. I'm confident of that. So um, with this, we, I think we just need to look at the annexation portion. Like, I would definitely encourage the applicant to address those things as part of their subdivision application to make sure that that's squared away. Yeah. If they decide to come forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm the same with you. I have a real issue. I have a, an issue with the water thing, worrying that, you know, that could be a real problem for the 
people that live there now. And um, I kind of have an issue with R1 going in there. I know it's, it's an infill there, but it's surrounded by large acreage. Those are, it, it's a very nice area. And I don't know, it just, I, haven't, I just have an issue with the R1 coming in right in the middle of it. Possibly you think an R1S would be... Yeah, something that, the, yeah, the, the, the lot size would be, you know, couldn't be real small, something that would be as a buffer in between those, because I don't know, but those, that surrounding property eventually will be annexed in. But right now, I think, you know, if you are, are around there, those are pretty well-maintained homes, nice properties. doesn't look like those people are going to be moving out or getting rid of their stuff anytime soon, so that's... To me, this might be a pocket for a while sticking out there. Okay. Any other questions, concerns, thoughts? Okay. And I will turn it to you guys to entertain a motion in one direction or the other. All right. I would move to approve the Corbin Meadows annexation ANNX. Uh, 0010-2019 with a recommendation for zoning of R1. Second. Motion is second. Call for a vote. Hampy? Yes. Davis? Yes. Kimball? Yes. Jerry? No. Stephenson? Yes. All right, that takes care of the public heat hearings for the evening. We'll go to item number five on this evening's agenda, and that is new business. Mr. Manley, I believe we need to talk about amendments on public hearing procedures. Yes, yeah, so currently when it comes to the rebuttal part of the hearing procedures, there is no time constraints on that. So the city attorney has uh, presented uh, you guys within your staff report a proposal to um, create a, a cap of seven minutes that doesn't um, preclude that if it was a um, if needed that we couldn't go beyond seven minutes sometimes if you have let's just say 40 or 50 individuals come up and they each all have their four minutes you may have a list 20 items long to that would extend beyond the seven minutes that may be an opportunity at time where you'd go beyond the seven but but what this does is establish that for rebuttal purposes, a seven minute cap. Okay. So I personally have been in the position where I had 20 minutes to present a, a project and then there were 40 or 50 people with their four minutes apiece. And two and a half hours later, I got five minutes to rebut two hours worth of testimony, which was really difficult to do. So whereas I'm not necessarily opposed to keeping these things as short as possible. Uh, we do need to make sure we maintain their due pro uh, an applicant's due process. Mm -hmm. So I think that if we were to change this, we should at least add a little bit of wiggle room into it so that we're not completely, absolutely must have eight minutes. Does that make sense, Bob? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that was one of the things that I uh, was talking to John about earlier was you know, we can set that time limit, but with the ability to request an extension or an additional seven minutes, um, whatever seems appropriate um, at the time. Okay. So yes, it's absolutely important to be able to express everything that needs to be covered. The purpose of the rebuttal is to not necessarily bring in new information, but to respond to specifically to comments that have been brought up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we're looking at seven minutes with the opportunity for the applicant during rebuttal to request an extension. And if, more or less, that would work. If they need it to, yeah, yeah. Would that be brought to the applicant's attention then at the time? Like, let's say we do have 40 people or whatever, then could someone suggest that they request to extend that? I mean, how would that work? Otherwise, could, how would the applicant know? It could go a couple ways. I could see someone who's an applicant who sees, well, I got a list of 20. There's no way I'm going to fit in seven. Or they may be not aware of a seven minute clock so we go and we hit the time clock and they've extended and they could be well i only got a dress is there a way i can yeah okay respond to more hmm. by having that caveat would then give you the i believe the pnz or the city council to then give them an extension of seven minutes or okay. whatever that may be so on the flip side of that if the applicant was coming back up and we have just witnessed you know 
something we could yeah. say, you know, oh. Nancy, you could say maybe the recommendation would be to extend that out. Okay, yeah, maybe, so right, yes. right. Yep, okay. thanks. That makes sense, yeah. Two ways to get to it, okay. Then do yeah. we need to entertain a motion? And yeah, motion recommendation to city council. To city council. Anyone want to make that recommendation? Um, I will make that recommendation um, as presented with a little bit of wiggle room added into it. Is that probably an appropriate way to put it? Oh. I believe, the, I believe the, the legal term is wiggle room. So I think, uh, uh, with the option yeah. to request wiggle With room. option to request. Oh, Thank you. Additional. Thank you. Yeah. My, my inner attorney is, is failing me. Excellent. It is horrible. Um, so, yeah, with the option uh, to request extra as needed. I second. And a motion and a second call for vote. Robinson? Yes. Yes. Kimball? Yes. Davis? Yes. Campy? Yes. All right, we will send that on to City Council. Um, item number six, administrative staff reports. There is none. Commission comments, anything for the good of the order? Keep up the good work. You guys are doing great. Thank yes, you. thank you for uh, making everything thorough. So when we come here, we've got the information we need. We appreciate that. If uh, nothing else, then I would uh, look for a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn.